the opportunity to share the way that the organizations, the associations, the institutions that launched some years ago the cohesion for the, uh, the alliance, cohesion alliance, now how they see the prospects they have about a situation where challenges are rising, where the need to join forces and close ranks defending and promoting cohesion policy still, again, still is present today. Just uh, think a few more minutes for uh, our guest, Commissioner Ferreira, uh, arrives. The way we're going to, what I suggest is the way we organize this debate, we will have our partners uh, intervening, having the opportunity to express themselves in the first stage. Then we will have uh, the opportunity to listen from Commissioner Freire, from Yunos Omarji, from our colleague Bok, chair of the Coter Commission, also from our rapporteur, Nathalie Saravesoles. So this will, I think, give us um, an idea about uh, where do we stand right now and the way we can proceed from now on about this, uh, about this um, challenge we, we have now. Dear Commissioner Elisabeth Fresh, uh, fellow country, um, it is uh, great to be able to have you with us uh, and an honour to receive you here in the Committee of Regions uh, at this session to participate in this debate. Uh, we're going to be turning our attention to a new cohesion alliance uh, so as to meet uh, the new challenges. Uh, how are we going to work in this new alliance? I'd like to thank you for having accepted our invitation and uh, our in English. That are here today with us. Uh, Case Logan, President of CPMR. Karim Gloanek Mouran, Representative of CEMR. Jean-Luc Van Rees, Vice President of AER. Dario Nardella, President of EuroCities. Jean-Claude Marcourt, President of CALGE, Karl Heinz Lamberts, President of AEBR. Be welcome to our session. Now, I would like just to, as kind of introduction, why there is a need, why do we feel there is a need to launch a new cohesion alliance for new challenges? Because not only we have learned from what happened at the last debate and discussion of the current MFF, the pressure, the tensions that were uh, very clearly exposed about different understandings of the role and the importance of cohesion policy, so we must be prepared for the debate of the new MFF, 
post-2027, but also because the situation, the context, has specific challenges about the way cohesion policy should be considered in this changing and challenging world. And uh, there is two or three ideas, very quickly, I would like to stress th them, that must be in the core of what we are uh, aiming uh, to achieve with this new, uh, new cohesion alliance. I think the first one is the need to promote the importance of cohesion, of cohesion policy for our communities, for regional and local communities across Europe. And if you look at the report that we've just presented yesterday, it is very, very clear the importance that regional and local representatives that were part of the survey, they recognize that the cohesion policy has for their, their territories and for their communities. The second idea is not only for us as it happens in any alliance to coordinate efforts to work together toward a common goal and a common objective, but especially to be aware that the best way, of course, to be part of this effort is being aware that we must be able to debate to discuss different approaches because we cannot feel, we cannot fall in the trap of preaching only to converted. We need to go out, we need to convert those who don't recognize yet the importance and the usefulness of cohesion policy. And I think together with all the organizations that give gives us the honor to be here today, I think we are able to be, to be, to do this kind of job. Also in this situation, united, we are stronger. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I have to suggest to you in the way we proceed from now is this. I will give the floor to each one of the representatives and chairmen, presidents of the associations then we will have Commissioner Ferreira. Um, then we will have uh, uh, Chairman Omar G um, giving us insight, our colleague Bok, and uh, also our rapporteur, Natalie Sarabezoles. At the final of the debate, we'll have a family photo that is the launching of the, of the alliance. So, First, I would like to give the floor to Kay Slogan, President of CPMR. You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Commissioner Ferreira, dear Mr. Omarje, and dear President Cordero, dear colleagues, the Cohesion Alliance has been key to maintain the central place of cohesion policy in the E agenda and budget. And today we need the same spirit of cooperation for the debate on the future. And I therefore welcome today's initiative to emphasize once more the indispensable role that cohesion policy plays in the European integration, integration process. And let me assure you that CPMR is fully committed to do its part. The European Union is confronted with the multiple challenges that are here to stay in the years to come. And I mentioned geopolitical, economic, social, and climate challenges. Cohesion policy can be a game changer in the response to these problems, not just because of the money, but also because cohesion policy is the ideal framework to develop effective strategies, connects global and local priorities, reinforces the quality of our governments, and ensures the engagement of local communities. 
if we want cohesion policy to live up to this ambition, improvements are needed in the future. And let me stress two areas of reflection. First, cohesion policy must be become more flexible to remain effective in an increasingly faster and more unpredictable world. Simpler rules and less constraints will be needed in the future. But make no mistake, flexibility does not mean a blank check for member states to do whatever they want. We don't want this sort of bad flexibility, a flexibility that undermines cohesion policy core objectives, jeopardizes the role of regional and local authorities in the governance, and ignores the territorial focus. But what we want is a good flexibility, a flexibility that allows for more tailor-made interventions, a flexibility that empowers local authorities, a flexibility that reduces the burden of administration. And secondly, the present programming period was meant to deliver more simplification and synergies. Instead, it's turning into the opposite. Regions must cope with too many funding instruments, different rules, strategic goals, and government issues. They are struggling to ensure coordination, including with the recovery and resilience facility. The CPMR is convinced that the only way forward is a single, and le a single legal and strategic framework for all funds. In other words, one European investment policy. To conclude, I want to say a quick word on the new round of exceptional cohesion policy measures to support SMEs and households in energy crisis. I want to highlight this message in the strongest possible way, because indeed cohesion policy can provide a contribution to address unforeseen events. It should do so, for instance, by helping our regions build more resilience to future shocks. But it should not become an emergency instrument. Cohesion policy is a long-term investment policy and not an ATM for emergencies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kees. Now it's my pleasure to give the floor to Speaker Karim Glovanek Mohan, representative of CEMR. You have the floor for three minutes. Merci beaucoup, President. Thank you very much, President. And of course, uh, I would like uh, to greet uh, Commissioner Ferreira. It's good to be on the same podium as the European Commission. I uh, greet also uh, Yunus, Chair of the Regi Committee and uh, representatives uh, of uh, local and regional authorities in Europe. Uh, I'd like to greet all of you. It is a, a pleasure to be able to express uh, the views of uh, the Council of European Ministers and Regions, CMER. Now, as you know, we are uh, a founding member of the Cohesion Alliance, and uh, we have uh, heard that from a rapporteur and also just now from the president of the Regi Committee, Cohesion, for all of us, suggests a dimension of solidarity, a message of a dialogue with uh, Europe on the ground, and citizens, and cooperation across borders. So cohesion is very much a symbol, perhaps the most visible symbol, for our fellow citizens, and it's for that reason that... Uh, municipalities and regions uh, of Europe uh, are keen to see that this policy uh, be pursued uh, for its own purposes, that is to fight inequalities. Now, we as representatives uh, of municipalities are the best uh, ambassadors of this policy, vis-a-vis -vis the Parliament, of course, and the Parliament also, of course, represents citizens, but also, I think, in dialogue with the European Commission. That's what we wish, and that's what the Alliance has shown since 2017, at a time when the, the multi-annual financial framework was being uh, prepared and the budget was likely to go down for the cohesion policy. Our action was effective because the budget was maintained, and uh, that m gives uh, the whole Alliance uh, its meaning. So we want to see uh, a change on the energy uh, front, uh, better access uh, to public transport, uh, vocational training. This is a policy which is essential to establish links between European citizens 
and uh, ourselves uh, uh, and those who uh, hold responsibilities in uh, municipalities, the Commissioner and Parliament. The crisis has been mentioned several times today and it's a time when we need to be effective. And we had to do it already during the COVID-19 crisis. We're having to do it now because of the consequences of the war in Ukraine. And of course, the uh, Commission of the European Union, together with the European Parliament, uh, turn to uh, municipalities and regions uh, for help, which is why within the Cohesion Alliance uh, there is a need to have a long-term vision with stable prospects uh, uh, for municipalities and regions uh, which uh, are up to the budgetary challenges and also, as my colleague said, we need a long-term vision. The eighth cohesion report uh, is a mine of information. Of course, we need all of us uh, to uh, be vigilant to maintain the principle of partnership amongst ourselves and uh, we uh, welcome these uh, new prospects for Cohesion Alliance. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Jean-Luc Van Rijs for three minutes. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Dear colleagues, uh, since uh, his creation more than 40 years ago, uh, our assembly organizes on a permanent basis um, discussion meetings, research sessions, benchmarking workshops among his uh, 150 regional members, and that in order to tackle uh, local issues. Due to our structure, we have one advantage. We are very flexible in seeing uh, the, the necessities of the, the regions and helping them. Uh, this common work that we, we do along the year creates the possibility for the members to conceive high-quality, um, uh, tailor-made addresses to the many societal challenges they encounter in the region. Very often, the proposed solutions cannot be realized due to a budgetary shortage of, or, of regional or national authorities. Mm -hmm. We think that the cohesion funds are the ideal way of triggering those proposed solutions to become structural. Cohesion funds advocate the direct and close relationship the EU needs to have with its citizens. I fully support the sayings of the Vice President uh, Tsitsi Kostas yesterday at our COR opening meeting. Uh, in fact, the cohesion funds are meant to trigger structural solutions on the long term not to cover losses or needs due to short-term needs. The Assembly of European Regions will continue to pursue his goal to accompany the, the best way possible his members to achieve a better professional service for their citizens and inform them of the opportunities offered by cohesion funding, also through cooperation with other colleagues here present. And uh, we also think that uh, it's really necessary that our assembly, but the other uh, participants uh, to this uh, meeting today, uh, help the Commission in giving useful information about investment needs in a quickly changing society. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Dario Nardella for three minutes. Grazie, President. Thank you, President. Thanks a lot for the invitation to participate here today. Uh, dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, today's debate on the future of cohesion policy comes at a crucial time for Europe. As the city leaders, we can clearly touch the consequences of this permanent emergency. Working at a local level, we are on front line to deliver concrete solutions to the growing problems of our citizens. But the question is, how much we can still suffer this permanent emergency. That's why our efforts do not stop here. We also implement long-term investments that can make Europe more resilient against the future shocks. The support we get from cohesion policy to do so, so is crucial. <coughs> Let me give you a concrete example. With the energy crisis, looming in our cities, cohesion funds are once again demonstrating their strategic value, as the Commissioner knows very well. 
our long-term investments in energy efficiency renovations and clean urban transport infrastructure are already promoting the energy transition of cities. As we transition to a new programming period, we will count on those resources and their effective delivery to continue investing in new energy solutions. With the support of occasion policy, we can strengthen our administrative capacity and skills to deliver energy savings and boost local energy production. And this will contribute to lower costs for our businesses and citizens. It will also contribute to reducing faster Europe's dependence on Russian gas. Energy is just one of the areas in which cohesion policy is making a difference. We don't need to be shy, and we must be vocal in communicating the overall impact of cohesion policy to our citizens. To conclude, as city leaders and as part of the Cohesion Alliance, we look forward to contributing to the debate on the future of a cohesion policy and the bring in the urban perspective. Today's declaration and the debate are just the beginning of a wider process. Together, as our president told, and counting on everyone's experience, we can bring forward important ideas and joint proposals that will strengthen cohesion and make it future proof. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dario. Thank you. Now I give the floor to President Jean-Claude Marcourt, President of Calre. You have the floor, sir, for three minutes. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, President, uh, Madam Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. First of all, I'd like to thank President Cordero for organizing this debate about the future of cohesion policy. This represents a precious opportunity for members of the New Cohesion Alliance to uh, pass on to the Commission the aspirations of the towns and regions they represent. The Cohesion Report has said that the, since 2001, the uh, less developed regions of Eastern Europe have been catching up the rest of Europe, which has uh, reduced uh, significantly the GDP gap per, per capita. The cohesion policy is an important lever when it's a question of guaranteeing to European citizens a uh, uh, suitable social economic uh, environment for personal development to harmonise within the EU with structural resources available to everyone. This is all the more the case in the present situation of inflation and rising energy prices. However, for the cohesion policy to be fully effective, the administrative burden and bureaucracy should not uh, be an obstacle to the using of cohesion funds. Therefore, it is essential to simplify even more implementation of a cohesion policy so as to guarantee better access to funds and their good use by member states and the regions of Europe. Calvary has always spoken in favour of simplifying the cohesion policy, be it via our working group meetings on this subject or our participation in the Cohesion Alliance. Calray intends to speak on behalf of the European regions uh, that play an important role in implementing the Cohesion Policy. I'd like uh, to take advantage of the presence of uh, Commissioner Ferreira and uh, Mr Umaji uh, for the work they've been doing on simplification. I think of 80 uh, new measures of the Cohesion Policy for the coming period and also uh, for the uh, new management framework which covers all the cohesion funds and also uh, using more often simplified costs. These are measures uh, which will enable um, member state and region managers uh, of cohesion policy whilst permitting synergy between various funds. I'd also like to stress that the administrative capacity at national and regional level is an essential key to a successful cohesion policy in practice. Therefore, it's essential that... Uh, Local authorities and regions benefit from appropriate support from the European institutions when it comes to an effective implementing of the cohesion funds. Uh, and so we can uh, use this to build a true relationship uh, of trust between the European institutions and uh, those uh, who work at a local and regional level, avoiding uh, dual audits and simplification. Digitization of uh, cohesion policy should be accepted to also to make it easier to access funds and to reduce the amount of red tape. 
both uh, foreign administrations and beneficiaries and to promote the exchange of better practice between regions and member states. So finally, I'd like to stress uh, how uh, much the Commission has been doing to simplify cohesion policy uh, procedures to guarantee equal opportunity for access to funds or regions and to ensure uh, use of funds beyond any criticism. Thank you. And I would like to give the floor to President Karl Eimz Lappers, President of AEBR. You have the floor for three minutes. Dear colleagues, after five interventions, all things have been said, but not by everyone and not in all languages. So I will continue in German. <laughs> Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Dear colleagues, the Cohesion Alliance uh, was and is uh, a success story. And it must remain so in the future, come what may. Therefore, it's important on the basis uh, of uh, the Eighth Cohesion Report to assess uh, our work uh, critically and to uh, point us in the right direction for the future. The uh, place of the Cohesion Fund needs to be defended, and that's particularly important because we see crisis after crisis uh, calling for strategies, uh, and that shouldn't lead to a situation where the cohesion uh, policy uh, should uh, be marginalised or, or diminished. At the same time, uh, regional local authorities uh, should uh, be able to speak as equal partners when it comes to designing and implementing any new crisis uh, instruments. Uh, from the point of view of, of a border region, on behalf of ABR, I'd like to share with you a few ideas. Europe is a uh, continent which um, has the biggest density of uh, cities by far, uh, that, no, sorry, of um, uh, national borders by far, and it's uh, important to turn these national borders into a way of keeping us together. Reducing borders is a key task of the European Union, and we have seen some amazing successes. Uh, Reduction of borders and frontiers is an important part of the DNA of the European Union. So for that reason, it's important uh, that uh, we continue our progress in this direction and that uh, where uh, you have cross-border regions uh, with uh, people living and working on both sides, uh, that needs to be uh, further promoted and enhanced. Uh, but every time a crisis comes, notwithstanding all efforts, we see this as a refugee crisis or the COVID crisis, then the states all of a sudden have the same reflex. They close the borders, whether it makes sense or not, or it's sheer nonsense. And we need to fight against that. That's particularly important. There are many obstacles which still have to move up borders. On behalf of the Commission in ABR, we have worked on the B Solutions uh, project, uh, giving tangible form to many things. Last but not least, it's a question of getting rid of the borders inside people's heads because we see increasing populism and nationalism, which means that many places borders are reappearing where they weren't before. And therefore, we need to make sure that the cohesion policy in the future continues uh, to play an important role and remains an effective, important instrument. Uh, we need, however, to breathe life into these instruments uh, and we need to make sure that these uh, instruments are further improved and completed, uh, for example, by using the transborder mechanism, which we all wanted to see, finally becoming reality, even if the Council of Ministers don't particularly like that. And also, I think uh, that we need to uh, meet the new challenge we have at the external border. That's not directly uh, relevant to the cohesion policy itself, but it's still important, and this is something that uh, border regions uh, have to face. And I think border regions can act as a kind of laboratory uh, for the future cohesion in Europe. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Commissioner Elisa Freire to take the floor for seven minutes mm -hmm. and to share with us her views about where do we stand and what's ahead. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for this uh, invitation to be here today uh, in such an important uh, occasion. Uh, I, I, well, I salute all the members of, of this table, and uh, in the person of the President, uh, I really thank you for this invitation. And why I thank you.
thank you so dearly because I think it, it wouldn't be uh, more timely uh, than this moment uh, to relaunch the Cohesion Alliance. Um, alliances may remain dormant for some times. However, in times of uh, challenges and serious risks, they need to be reactivated or activated, remain vigilant, and sometimes go on the offensive, and we are living through those times. We need the mobilization of cohesion stakeholders. Uh, this alliance was formed uh, back in uh, 2017. Uh, you have made a name for yourselves in the 2018 reform and were, and were a key influence on the resulting package. But first of all, you also helped us, and sometimes we forget it, you helped us to secure the overall financial alloc allocation uh, of, uh, for cohesion policy and to make cohesion policy available for all regions with a particular focus, naturally, on the least developed ones. Second, you helped us, and I'm just quoting two or three ideas, but you helped them to keep regional and local communities at the heart of the policy, as you have stressed also in your interventions, to keep and expand the partnership principle and to maintain a place-based approach, which tailors the approach to the different regions empowering local people, local authorities. A third example, you encouraged, and you are still encouraging us, uh, and supported us in a large number of simplifications. Some of them we have not tested them yet, because the 21-27 has not been applied yet. But, um, uh, but already in the past, a common legal framework for all shared management funds and the single audit principle uh, making life easier for beneficiaries, especially the smaller ones. Uh, many other examples could be uh, quoted here, uh, which relate directly to your contribution. And history has proven the value of these contributions. Uh, they have uh, proven that they were necessary. And now, looking with the eyes of 2022, it is also clear that in a world of crisis and the transition to the digital economy, which was accelerated by COVID, uh, and the transition to the green economy, which is now being accelerated by the Russian aggression, every region needs investment and every region needs a long-term development strategy and their very own concept of re resilience to be implemented. However, regions do not have the same starting points and the means available to each member state are not the same, hence the need of cohesion to balance or rebalance the playing field. Your support for prioritizing local involvement is also proved far-sighted. When lockdown happened, local delivery and local actors became the key. And your support uh, for simplification was also spot on. In both COVID and the current refugee crisis, simplification and flexibility were at the maximum, uh, and they were crucial to enable cohesion policy to become Europe's first immediate responder. And future crises or current ones, as is the example of soaring energy prices, will require the same speed, same flexibility. So, again, I welcome today's relaunch not just because of your many past achievements, but because cohesion policy will need you again. We are needing you again now. Uh, we need you now, and we need you in the coming years, uh, post-2027 reform, uh, reform. In fact, the Cohesion Alliance should remain a permanent feature with regular meetings and advocacy of cohesion as pillar, as a principle, and as a policy of the European Union. Your voices and those of your members must be heard, and we are listening to you. You have identified the key points for the future in your declaration and in your observations on the Eighth Cohesion Report. But from the many excellent points you make, I'd like to highlight three key questions. First, how can cohesion policy remain a pillar of the European growth model? You rightly note the many achievements of cohesion policy for maintaining, for maintaining public investments 
to helping lagging regions catch up in everything from economy to health care, and that these achievements are built on effective place-based policies on our local partnership, on our local routes. You also note the recent trends for more centralized instruments away from the local place-based approach, which is the foundation of cohesion policy and foundation of our success. So that's something to be attentive to. While the scale of the investment needs means that new instruments are welcome, this does beg the question how to ensure that cohesion policy and our place-based method remains a pillar and a model central to the economic governance. Let me highlight in this respect the inroads we made recently in the country reports under this semester, European semester, which now have a dedicated analysis of territorial imbalances. But more can be done, better can be done. And I very much welcome your voice and your contribution on this topic. Second key question, how can the policy be responsive to sudden shocks and crises like the ones we are going through, while still focusing on our core business long-term transformation? You rightly note how effective cohesion policy has been in responding to the COVID crisis as well as to the refugee crisis. And as I have announced, we'll also be tabling proposals. We are working on it in the follow-up of the proposals of the European Parliament and also of some messages from the Council to mitigate the impact of the energy crisis. In particular, the cooperation with the European Parliament has been extremely helpful in this context. And I understand the anxiety among cohesion stakeholders each time the cohesion is used for emergency interventions. <coughs> However, I stand by the actions we have taken with CRE, with CARE, now Fast Care, and future initiative on energy. If we let this crisis drag on unchecked, they will only aggravate current disparities and definitely undermine cohesion. Having said this, it's clear that our key role remains long-term transformation. The stability of funding and long-term perspective at the core of cohesion policy allows for careful planning, local involvement, and frees region from political short-termism. How can we keep this focus when crises are raging? I think we have proved it. And in the midst of COVID and with war in the neighboring house, we continued our work on programming. We managed to stick to our long-term goals. We were flexible as necessary, and we did not abandon our strategic view. Which bring, brings me to my last point. How can we provide place-based solutions in the context of the green transition and demographic and rural challenges. You rightly note that individual sectoral investments, such as in transport or IT infrastructure, do not automatically translate to successful long-term transformations. That we need cohesion policies integrated approach based on a complete view of all the needs of the local areas. You also note the importance of administrative capacity and of governance and the flexibilities and simplifications. And this is why I have been pushing to embed the principle of do no harm to cohesion in the preparation of all the other policies. This is also why I am working to integrate more reforms and cohesion and to put the technical support instrument also at the service of regional and local authorities. Dear colleagues, on these three questions and more, we need your contribution, we need your voice, as you know, we are preparing a high-level group on that, to reflect on the future of the policy and will solicit contributions in a structured form in the course of 2023. But I would particularly value your contribution to the broader policy debate as well. Cohesion has been the silent strength of the EU, but we need its voice to be heard and its achievements recognized. You are the witnesses of cohesion those who can testify to the transformations, those who know from the ground the difference it makes. As we start to reflect on a new period after 2027, I ask you to play a full role in the political debate at the European and at the national level, to speak out, to speak up for cohesion policy and the place-based approach. Europe needs cohesion policy, and cohesion policy needs the Cohesion Alliance relaunched. I look forward to your contributions and discussions. Thank you very much.
Now I give the floor to Chairman Omar, Omar G for five minutes. Merci beaucoup, cher. Thank you very much, President. I have five minutes, and in that time I'm going to try and give you a few messages in telegraphic form. I think, firstly, that we know there is um, a difficulty before us. And it's our responsibility in terms of political action. We can see that there are simultaneous crises that are being combi combined and they're long enough lasting. Crisis has become a permanent fixture and that makes the future uncertain. And nobody can really tell how we're going to navigate this in a number of years and the measures that we're going to have to take. But we need to be conscious of this and keep our fundamental um, aims of cohesion in mind. We have to keep the compass in mind. We have the cohesion agency and this has a great added value. We are really happy to participate in this. We launched this together with President uh, Mr. Karl Heinz Lamberts. And we have seen that this, this value, this value of defending everywhere the principles in which we believe. I want to remind you of something. The European Parliament played a key role in the last um, framework budget on the MFF. The discussions began and in terms of political policies, there's the, there was the CAP and uh, regional policies to consider. And these were really dwelled upon. And I would like to commend President Sassoli this evening. He took the responsibility to defend to the bitter end cohesion policy. And I think that you can count on the full support today of the European Parliament in the discussions to come on the subject of defending and not just quickly defining the traditional policies, but the essential policies, the very modern policies, the CEAP, for example, and regional policies. Second point now, we have, on the one hand, advantages. There's a battle commencing, of course, but there's advantages to consider. When it comes to crises, we have demonstrated the value of cohesion policy. Cohesion policy was almost unexpected in terms of crises, but think of Brexit. A country left the EU for the first time. The first policy that was relevant here to deal with the impacts was the cohesion policy. During the pandemic, this was also relevant. And now today, in dealing with the consequences of the war in Ukraine, we have demonstrated, the European Commission and the European Parliament, that we were capable to make this policy a lot more flexible and to deal directly with European people's needs. And that's inspirational for us, for our future discussions on this. But there are also risks to consider. We have witnessed that the Recovery and Resilience Fund and all the um, facilities that were given to member states here, I think that perhaps, considering the European, the, the Council of the European Union here, not the European Commission, it was considered a sort of on a renationalization of certain EU policies. And what we need to be very careful with here is the temptation of this renationalization. 
because we need to have European solutions. European solutions that lead to governing with common rules, common principles for 27 member states. Clearly, the Recovery and Resilient Fund did have considerable impacts. And if we want to win this battle, what we have to do is, together, succeed for the 2021 to 2027. We need to succeed with that programming. This is an urgent thing to act on. And this is going to have a bearing on the future of cohesion policy. This all starts with the programming of the 2021-2027 cohesion policy. And you can count on us. You can count on our support from the European Commission and the different services, as well as the role of the European Parliament. You can count on us in these endeavours. Finishing up now, President and Madam Commissioner, I would like to say that we will play our part in participating and reflecting on the future of regional policies. We will consider the consequences of this crisis period that we're going through, and we will also bring new ideas, facing up with, to the new challenges for the European Union and the new uh, transitions that we have to face up to. I'm thinking in particular here of uh, demographics. There's a demographic shock at the moment in Europe, especially for 2028 to 2034. There will be a decrease in many European countries during this period and therefore we need to reflect on this as part of our planning. I'm going to uh, respect the time limit I was given. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor for five minutes to the chairman of our COTAR commission, our colleague Emil Bock. Thank you, Mr. President. Dear Commissioner Ferreira, dear Presidents, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the European Union has delivered its citizens maybe the highest living standards in the world. Cohesion policy, this convergence machine, as the World Bank said, and Commissioner Ferreira mentioned yesterday, is the glue that holds Europe together and brings jobs and prosperity to every corner of the European Union. However, Despite all efforts, regional disparities remain high and some are even growing. Particularly, unemployment rates, unemployment rates in less developed regions remain far above those in more developed regions. The regional innovation divide in Europe has grown and, not that, and not, is not enough. It is also certain that the war in Ukraine will have a negative consequence for the economical, social and territorial cohesion in the EU, not only because of the ongoing refugee crisis, but also because of the implication of rising energy prices and energy dependency affecting the green transition. Key challenges remain, therefore, to leave no one and no region behind. What are the new consequences of these challenges for cohesion policy? Firstly, there is a need for sufficient flexibility on the ground to adapt the strategic framework of cohesion policy towards the local and regional challenges. Secondly, it is also clear that cohesion policy alone cannot deal with all these issues and that the cohesion spirit should be embedded in all EU policies. Structural and investment funds should not, and I emphasize, should not be understood as a repairing tool for the misconception of other EU funding instruments. Thirdly, there is an urgent need to rethink the current approach whereby more and more new instruments are created with the intention to support cohesion. Instead of this fragmentation, our objective must be to strengthen the existing system of funding instruments under shared management. Overall, 
more coordination and coherence between various EU policies is needed to promote the well-being of people and to address the growing disparities. I'm sure that the cohesion policy will continue to play a pivotal role in the, these debates on how the future cohesion policy beyond 2027 should look like. In conclusion, as I said at the beginning, cohesion policy brings jobs and growth in every corner of Europe and is a key policy for the future of Europe. The future of our democracy in Europe is direct, directly influenced and connected with the future of cohesion policy. The cost of no cohesion is the cost of no Europe. The Cohesion Alliance is an alliance for the democratic future of Europe and should be supported by all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Now I give the floor to the Rapporteur, Natalie Sajavesoles. You have the floor for five minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. I'm the last person to speak. And I'm trying not to repeat what's been said already. As I was saying earlier, and we've had different interventions, and they, they show and confirm that cohesion is a founding principle of the European Union. It's very important for EU citizens and their lives. It, it's something that unites us as citizens, brings us together. Cohesion policy is also uh, ways of financing materials, intellectual materials, human materials. It's also a method too. It's a, a construction partner. And the second cohesion report um, showed us this. We have considered the advantages and the risks of cohesion. And this um, partnership of, of construction helps us to avoid some of these risks. And um, the recovery today with cohesion helps us um, go along this pathway together. Also in this cohesion report um, is very interesting considering the future. It's very interesting to be here beside you today speaking about um, these matters and how we can integrate cohesion policy into the report. Two uh, big ideas that uh, the Committee of the Regions uh, could draw as part of the cohesion policy are the principle of cohesion, and we spoke about that, decentralisation. This is one of the risks pointed out by the President. The temptation behind this uh, verse, as um, President Cordero said, we need to reflect on the integration of cohesion in European legislation in order for this to avoid this um, just being a dead letter. And I thank the European Parliament too for um, contributing to this matter. It was very interesting. We talked about decentralisation. And here, it's very important. When it comes to decentralisation, we can focus on expertise and knowledge and the different citizens from various different territories. This is part of the effectiveness of cohesion policy. It's also a way of being close to the citizen and to uh, responding to what uh, President Cordero spoke about earlier, bringing EU policies closer to the citizens and getting, giving them direct responses to their daily issues. I don't want to speak for too long. Everything has been really said. I would like to thank everybody for um, this debate on a new cohesion alliance. I think this was a great debate and um, I think we're working together in the right manner. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I have requests from the floor. The first one, I will give the floor to our colleague, Sari Rausio. You have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, dear colleagues, dear proud Europeans, on behalf of the EPP group, I'd like to welcome the relaunch of the Cohesion Alliance today and to reaffirm our group's full support for this meaningful initiative. 
We, are, we have already proved in the past uh, that by working strongly together, we cannot only defend a strong cohesion policy, but also modernize it and make it flexible in response to current trends and challenges. Nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. Of course, the focus on, for our practitioners uh, uh, and managing authorities right now is on closing the, pre, uh, the previous and planning for the current cohesion uh, programming cycle. In most cases, they are also the same people in charge of the implementation on the Just Transition Fund and the National Recovery and Resilience Plans. Regional and local managing authorities are overloaded. They need more capacity uh, uh, building support for the European and national levels. By ensuring the efficient take-up of uh, structural and investment funds today and tomorrow, we can rely and be confident for a strong uh, co co cohesion policy in the future. Therefore, we are looking forward to the debates on the future of cohesion policy, the first important step the relaunch of the Cohesion Alliance was done today. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Now the floor goes to Javier Villafejero for one minute. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, President. Before getting into this, I would like to thank the Commissioner and the team for um, responding to the health crisis and then the war. This does all uh, link back to, of course, EU funds and um, at regional level too, this is very important when it comes to dealing with the crisis uh, and the implications of the health crisis. We support the strength and the, the, the backing of the cohesion policy. It's very important today. And I would like to speak about three concrete things when it comes to the difficulty of um, dealing with these funds for the various regions in Europe, I would like to point out, firstly, we need to try and reduce bureaucracy in Europe. That's fundamental. It's necessary for the implementation of these funds. Secondly, now, co-financing. There needs to be more emphasis on this and more scope. And thirdly, there needs to be a better ability for the regions to implement the funds on the ground. Thank you. Goes to our colleague Miriam Vekapera for one minute. Mr. President, Madam Commissioner, uh, the last, last few years showed that our no nation of uh, cohesive European society has to involve and the cohesion policy with it. Uh, recent crises have affected lo lo localities differently, and that's why we will need uh, actions exactly to quality of di digital infrastructure, impact of climate change, uh, and uh, refugee crisis in the account. Uh, on behalf of Reno Europe Group, I have to underline that we need special effort in rural areas where we have a low po uh, population, long distances, the impact of climate change and suffering out uh, migration, especially par uh, particularly of uh, young people and loss of businesses as well. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to our colleague Pavel Branda for one minute. Uh, Oh, it, it will be me. Uh, Paul Branda is uh, not uh, in good stuff. I use my right and I will speak with my language, Slovenian. My name is Peter Švaral and I am from the ECR group. Dear uh, Mr. President, uh, Dear Mr. Commissioner, uh, colleagues, 16 years of working in function of the staff of the Hoz... Colleagues, uh, uh, Commissioner, as... Uh... 16 years in uh, the function of uh, this one policy, uh, which uh, is uh, particularly health throughout your investigation policy. That the policy of uh, co that the cohesion policy is very important. And this. 
vidiecké časti nášho kraja sú The statistics doesn't reflect the uh, situation in uh, our country. We still uh, need support from uh, the European Union to finance uh, environmental projects, projects to develop culture, education. Our region is a cross-border region, but uh, also together with regions uh, in Austria and uh, Hungary, We have this cross-border region, and therefore I call on you to support uh, cross-border regional cooperation because the support is uh, smaller than we all need and smaller than we need. Annette Moupertuis for one minute. Merci, Monsieur le Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Nowadays, we need the cohesion policy more than ever because our regions, our cities are undergoing several shocks of different kinds. We're also having to deal with different uh, transitions in the medium and long term. So we need a strong cohesion policy. As Madam Commissioner said, it's uh, an instrument that can be used to support growth. When things are hard, we have to go faster, not slow down. Cohesion requires coordination, simplification and more decentralization. I believe that, that those should be the pillars of this new alliance. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Christophe Rouillon. One minute. Merci, Madame. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. We had a somewhat of a cold shower uh, coming from the speech from the European Commission who didn't have anything positive to say about the, European, about the cohesion policy but you've uh, restored our faith I really enjoyed your speech but I think you need to talk to Jean-Luc Mélenchon in France because uh, he doesn't seem to have understand, understood that uh, cohesion policy means uh, solidarity lastly I'm a mayor in France and we've had discussions with Commissioner Schmidt on social cohesion. We need a European Union strategy on social housing. If we had a policy like that, we could insulate our buildings better to reduce carbon dioxide and to create employment. That would improve the attractiveness of our regions and it would also help our citizens. Energy crises are on the rise now and everybody's very concerned about that. So a policy of social housing would allow Europe to reconnect with its citizens. Thank you. Our colleague Isol Price, you have the floor for one minute. Yeah, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's become very clear how important the cohesion policy is for regions. We need this investment so that our regions can become strong and that differences are reduced. At the same time, it's clear we're saying that cohesion policy should prevent crisis but not master a crisis. And what we're seeing is that it's been used as a, an emergency measure, but we urgently need this policy. Cohesion policy brings things together, holds things together. That's correct. Different regions are starting from a different place. That's true. That means we need uh, we need more um, funding but unfortunately sometimes it's difficult to fill out these applications, then you don't get any financial support. Everything becomes more expensive and eventually we reach a point where the timelines that were given for, these, uh, fund, for this funding cannot, simply cannot be met. These are problems that local and regional authorities are facing and these are the very places that could really use this funding. Now the floor goes to Josef Frey. One minute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're um, being 
told that more accountability is needed in this situation. But even when things are normal, it's, it's difficult to uh, get a sense uh, of a perspective. So it's even more difficult when there's a crisis. Our authorities made huge efforts during the pandemic and during the migration waves. I think um, at every level, we need to ensure that our authorities are crisis ready. It's difficult for them to manage crisis. There's the different departments involved in it, but it's not part of their daily work. And then the cross-border aspect plays a role here too. Aeroplanes, for example, being used in an emergency situation. That uh, often happens in a crisis situation. Perhaps you're not necessarily looking um, out, outside towards your neighbour. You've got more of an internal focus. So I think the uh, cross-border aspect and building bridges across borders is really important to become more resilient to crisis. I don't have any other requests for the floor, and I would like to take this opportunity just to put two or three ideas that I think it's important, or are important, at least to be considered. And it, they arise from the fact that the way we position ourselves in this discussion, in this debate, is of the utmost importance for the success of our cause. And if we put the question mainly center in what money is used for addressing emergencies, I think easily we can be put in the wrong side of history. Because facing an emergency, what people may think of our position is, well, there is some selfishness. Don't use the money to address what everybody sees as an emergency. But if the question is put in the type of solution, in the type of answer that you give to the extraordinary circumstances, I think easier we can be put in the right side of history. And the bottom issue is this. If you want a lasting solution for an emergency, or if you want a lasting solution for some events, you cannot only take money from cohesion policy to address that need. You must use cohesion policy as cohesion policy to address that need. And I think the energy situation and the energy transition is quite an example of one thing or another. In our report, almost 50% of respondents said that they would use money to address the price issue. But that's a danger because once the situation is over, we will be at the same place we were before, if not worse. But if we insist in the cohesion policy as the answer for that kind of solution, for that kind of situation, not only the money, but the approach that cohesion policy has, then you will be talking of a long-lasting solution, a better solution, a solution that places you way better after the emergency ends, way better than you were before. And the only reason why I think it's important, this is important, is because 
it's, we're going to enter a fierce fight, a fierce debate, and presenting this in the best way we can, I think is one of the conditions for us to be successful. This is just for reflection and just for thinking in the way we can approach the issue. The second one is about the alliance, the committee of the regions, the association's participation in all this, uh, this, um, in all this process. And namely, in something that I know, Commissioner Ferreira knows, that we are eager to participate in the reflection and the work of the high-level group. I think we can add, as institutions, as an alliance, for example, something that will enrich the debate and the reflection uh, of that high-level group and even the conclusions that uh, it can come and uh, it can provide. And I think I'm speaking on behalf of all the institutions here present to say, please use us. Please use us. We are here to help and we are here to make this work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a photo <laughs> that is the statement of launching this new alliance cohesion. I think we are prepared. Could, could all the members stand up in, in the room, please? <laughs> 